Danny, two years on from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's sacking. Despite all the criticism, was it all that bad? Um, when he went, Manchester United were seventh, 12 points behind uh, Chelsea. Um, he went two years almost to the day. In fact, it was two years last night, was it not? Yes, it was. And the final straw for Ole was a 4-1 defeat uh, at the hands of Watford. This was Ole post-match. The results are not uh, good enough. We know that. We've gone 30 games unbeaten away from home. Now we we'll lose two on the bounce, conceding four goals in both of them. So, of course, something's wrong. I feel for the fans and I feel with the fans and I'm, I feel the, the same as them. We're embarrassed losing uh, the way we do. We know we've been, we are in a, in a very bad run, a bad situation, but that's part of football. And I know they'll support the team and whoever's uh, on the pitch every single day. And then sometimes you've got to say sorry. And that was a, a sorry for the uh, performance. Well, as far as Ollie was concerned, it was sorry from uh, the people in the top brass at United straight after that because they sacked him. Is it is it odd, Danny Murphy, that two years on to the day we're still talking about the deficiencies of Manchester United? Is it odd? Um, Where did they no, go? I to? wouldn't say it's odd. I think if there has been any improvement, it's minimal. Um, last season was a success, I suppose, considering where they'd been in terms of finishing in the Champions League position and winning that League Cup. But they've gone backwards again this season, so there's still a lot of problems. Uh, yeah. I think most United supporters would have expected bigger improvement in two years with the money they've spent and the appointment they made. Um, but we've talked about the injury crisis. We've talked about Ten Hag learning on the job. I think there's a mountain to climb for Manchester United to become competitive again. And when I say competitive, I mean latter stage of Champions League and competing for the Premier League. They're well off it. Yeah, I mean... Still talk, well off it. Talk about treading water, Simon. They were second and third under your friend Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Yeah. He left them seventh. They're sixth today. Yeah. So, I mean, at the end of the day, as Danny says, minimal is the right. If there's been any improvement, it has to be minimal, if at all. 24 months, where have they got to? Yeah, I don't think there's been huge amounts of improvements. I think there's a culture that's been embedded and ingrained in Manchester United over a period of time, a tacit acceptance from those that seem to play for the football club that they don't have the same obligations as generations gone past. I think there's been a poor performance in the boardroom. And I think Ten Hag has not done as much as I anticipated he might do it for this season. But mm. we're only into the beginning of this season. Yeah, we are. And they've not played well, and yet they're still sixth in the league. Um, and so with that in mind you could price it in if they played as badly for other people and has been as, as poor as they've been they might not even be six in the league if they had a different manager namely on a gone to I had a problem with his appointment from the start not because I don't like the man and not because I don't respect his contribution to the game but I do dislike rewarding mediocrity and mm. I don't think the credentials were there to manage Manchester United I do think that the two and a half or three years that he was there the actual settling down on the, on, the, on the acceptance of Manchester United being a club that doesn't actually have to have players performing at their highest level, understanding their responsibility of what it really involves being a Man United player, was embedded far deeper into the psyche of Man United than it needed to have been. Needed to have been. So that makes Ten Hag's jobs more difficult. So I don't think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer should be persona non grata, but I think it should be called for what it is. Yes, OK, we can bring out the statistics that they finished second and third. I don't know what the league composition was and who performed well in the league at that particular time because I don't have the information in front of me. But it's fact. It, it, it it's may fact. well be. If anyone believes, if anyone genuinely believes that the solution to the question was leave Onigon and Solskjaer in, in, in situ, I don't, I don't know what to say to that. If we're comparing and contrasting what the situation would have been if we'd have kept Oligon, that, that road had been run, I that think... path had been trodden. You were reaching the point where players like Bruno Fernandes were playing the way that they were, their attitude towards the manager that was what it was. The manager was done. Done. If he ever, Even if he wasn't done before, he was done. We saw the end of it in the last game against Watford where it was shocking. I think comparisons are inevitable but not, not necessarily valuable in terms of what's That's coming right. forward and what's going to happen. The fact is, Ten Hag's got a run of games coming up now where he's, he's under huge pressure to get some decent performances, even if the results aren't particularly... Yeah. You know, they've got some really tough games coming up. So it's going to be a test in time for all of them. Mm. And Goodison um, will be a beer pit on Sunday. Yeah, I, I, my, my gut feeling is what I said the other week on the show, and I think it's the feeling of a lot of people now, is that it's it's inevitable there'll be somebody else in charge there next season. Mm. We talk about upholding standards, Danny. Is that the role of the manager or the player? Well, it's both, but it's mainly the player. Uh, sorry, mainly the manager's job. 
um, to make sure that everybody's on board and be. I mean, players do have their say a lot, especially the more elevated they get in terms of status, position, and success. Um, and I think, I mean, my my experience is Gerard Houllier. God bless him. He 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 was an amazing manager in many ways and one of the first things I thought was a brilliant idea and Simon might laugh at this and think it's nonsense but I think it was a clever way of showing us who's boss in his way and we used to have a suggestion box at the beginning I think I've told you before Si the beginning of this season suggestion box because he was sick of the lads moaning we want this we want that blah 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 and a couple of examples would be Something small like, you know, we don't really want to wear suits for home games. We're much more comfortable in track suits. Oh, that's And reasonable. then another one would be, we used to stay, for example, in Europe. When we go away in Europe, we'd stay in hotels the night after the game and fly back the next day, whereas some teams fly straight back. The lads didn't want to do it. They wanted to get home. Yeah. So what he did is he'd take all the suggestions. And the next day we'd have a meeting, we'd have a flip chart. And, for example, he'd, he'd, he'd give a little. And he'd, so, for example, with the suits, he'd say, well, if you want to wear track suits, that... I can How live, did you vote? Suits or tracksuits? I can live with that tracksuits. So oh, right. okay. It wasn't a vote. He's, oh, the, he's the manager. They're suggestions. Oh, I see. So he said, okay, you know, as long as we're smart and we all do it, you know, fine. No hats and all that. We'll we'll do suit. Uh, we'll do tracksuits. Hat. Mm-hmm. Then he pulled up a list of all the points won in the Premier League the weekend after European games, and we were top by quite a way. And he said, that's why we stay in hotels the night after a European game. So we're still staying in hotels the night after a European game. Uh-huh. Forget that next one. Right. And the majority of things would stick. Yeah. They'd be his decisions, but he'd give us a little bit. And the players always felt, we leave in the room, we'd had our say, we'd got a little bit, and it was done. So he's letting the players... You did achieve price li- uh, precisely well, no, nothing. No, we did. We got, we, <laughs> right. got, we got a few things. But do you understand where I'm coming yes. from? Yes. It yeah. was a clever way. So, it was a in. clever way of him saying, I'm in charge. This is what, I'll give you a little bit, but this is what's happening. Right, you see, at Liverpool now, I mean, you say when it comes to upholding standards, it, it, it's really the role of the manager as opposed to... Uh, I think uh, so. As at Liverpool these days, um, and it's changed, clearly. Um, it's said that Pep Linders, the assistant, liaises with the players on everything from the upcoming training schedule to travel arrangements for away trips and what clothing needs to be worn. Oh, there you go. Their inputs relate to Klopp where necessary. Mm. But um, having said all that, Klopp and Linders talk about the need for the squad to be largely autonomous rather than players relying on staff to keep reminding everybody of standards. Well, if you get good recruitment, so, if you get good players in, Jim, like at Fulham, and I'll use Fulham as a good example. We had Andy Johnson, people like Aaron Hughes, myself, people who've been around the block, yeah? A lot of players who've been, been in Damien Duff been playing a long time if we signed someone who came into training and started giving it the big and wasn't putting it in and started dictating he'd be put in his place quite quickly the manager wouldn't have to do it because you've got some senior players who you've recruited well who you know will keep the dressing room in a certain level of order on top of that the manager would also have his rules and, and make sure that everything was if it got past us right so you so, can identify with this that Klopp's almost the last port of call at Liverpool because he's focusing on Everything else, like how we win the good next managers game. let m- good managers make players think that they're having a, an input and they're part of the process. Ultimately, they're not really. Yeah, nobody's yeah. dictating to Klopp and Linders what goes on in training. I think isn't what, that leadership, you, Simon? Letting what, people below you think they're having. Yeah. An, I mean, absolutely. Convinced. Did you have a suggestion box for the players at uh, I, Palace? I, I, no, I think the managers <laughs> should be effective in the way they want to. You've got to treat players like adults. You've got to create a culture where they behave like adults. Yeah. And I would suggest to you that Klopp has created a culture inside that football club that enables him to de- to give the perception of a degree of autonomy. Like convincing, giving somebody an idea, convincing it's convincing them that it's their own, and then telling them how wonderful the idea was. That's yeah, it, yeah. that's yeah. how management works. It's clever management, and you. Sh- I mean, these are grown men. These are grown men that are very well remunerated, have strong opinions about how they should and shouldn't be treated in the life that they live now. So the best way to manage them is by de- by giving them the perception of a, a degree of autonomy. But the standards have been set. I don't think we could argue irrespective of whether we think Liverpool's achievements have been as monumental as we would think they would be given the amount of profile that Klopp gets, I don't think we could really argue that the standards of Liverpool Football Club aren't very high. No. And that the true. players that play for him don't understand their responsibilities because and don't of do him, their that, jobs. But that's because of him. Yeah. So and that means that, that the means, manager is so the that most... means the culture that he's created, he can now step away from 
and be detached from and allow this feeling that the players are making their own decisions because they already know the rules. That's what Fergie they did. Already know, they already know oh, the guidelines. Yeah, yeah. They already know what they can and can't so do. So two years on from Solskjaer sacking, uh, we're at this point now with Manchester United. Where have they got to in 24 months uh, irrespective of uh, the discussions, as, uh, the standards aspect to the discussion? And there's a message there and I totally concur with it. I am so surprised this morning Danny got in quick and mentioned Andy Johnson before Simon had the chance. Well, I was surprised as <laughs> well. Did uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, he know I used him because he knows what he's like. Yes. And he's a, a proper, per, like a, a professional that you want in your squad. Yes. And those type of guys are really important for managers to have on their side. Exactly. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.